I want you to picture this. There's a battle that is going to ensue. In the redemptive history of the nation of Israel, uh, you had God's chosen people, the Israelites and the Philistines. And the Philistines wanted to capture and enslave the Israelites. And if they did that, God's redemptive story could not go forward. The Philistines had a champion. His name was Goliath. And in those days, wars between countries were often fought between the two best warriors. And whoever won, uh, that was the victor and the spoils of that victory was theirs. So for 40 days, Goliath called out to the men of Israel, come and fight me. And none did. Israel was paralyzed by fear. But in the midst of this story, there's a backstory. And in this backstory, the nation of Israel was led by King Saul, and King Saul absolutely lost his mind. Uh, he lost faith, and as a result, Israel needed a new king. So God commissioned Samuel, the prophet, to go find the new king. He sent him to Bethlehem, this obscure town in the backwoods of nowhere, and he sent him to a man named Jesse. And Jesse had these handsome and kingly looking sons. And so Samuel immediately thought that it must be one of these sons who would be king, but it wasn't. The man that God chose was not a man at all. It was a teenage boy named David. An obscure teenage boy named David was anointed king. Ever before he fights Goliath, ever before he's in position to be king, what is he doing? He is in obscurity. He's a shepherd boy taking care of stinky sheep. And when you take care of stinky sheep, you walk in sheep. Well, you know what comes next. See, but we learn something about a limitless life. A limitless life is birth in obscurity because in obscurity, you learn humility. Uh, that's one thing that we've got to understand is that God only unleashes his limitless life through people who are humble enough to say, I need it. But David not only embodied humility and experienced humility in his obscurity, he also honed his skills. He learned to be faithful in the little things because as David was taking care of sheep, he had to also defend his sheep. He had to use his slingshot, his staff to fight off bears and, and lions. So in the midst of obscurity, in the midst of small faithful things, David learned to be faithful. Here's the sad reality. So many people never ever get to fight and slay Goliath because they're not humble enough to be faithful in the little things. You see, in the little things, our reality in God is shaped, but also the future reality of what we can do for him is shaped as well. If we're faithful in little things, we'll be faithful in a lot. You see, David actually slayed Goliath long before he ever entered the octagon with the giant. You see, not only was David humbled in his obscurity, not only did David learn to be faithful in the small things in obscurity, but he also learned to trust God's faithfulness. David had seen how God had anointed him king in obscurity. David had seen how God had empowered him in the midst of defending and protecting his sheep. And now when David steps into the octagon against a giant, when you look at the giant, David has no chance. But what David did have is humility, which caused him to radically rely on God. What David had was faithfulness because he was faithful in the small things. He was prepared for this big thing. And ultimately, David knew God's faithfulness. And so we know how the story goes. Young David jacks up Goliath and Israel wins. See, that's how a limitless life is unleashed. But let's take a further step back and look at the larger story. You see, I'm not David, you're not David. David is a historical figure, but the reality is David is also a typology of what Christ would come to do. And you and I are Israel. We're afraid. We are shaking in our boots. And the Goliath that we are afraid of that we can't defeat is sin, death, and evil. So Jesus, the better David, does that. Think of these similarities. 
David born in Bethlehem, Jesus born in Bethlehem. David born in obscurity, Jesus born in obscurity. David was a shepherd, Jesus was the great shepherd. David was anointed king, Jesus is the king. And what does Jesus do for us? The great shepherd, the king, defeats sin, death, and evil through his life, death, resurrection, and ascension to rule and reign his kingdom. Hey, this is Derwin Gray, marinate on that.